So the 11th transformation is graph of self-adjusting property in inverse trigonometric function. Now this property is very important, not just in inverse trigonometric functions, but in entire calculus. Now before discussing how to draw the graph of these functions, let us discuss two things first. Now the first thing is, if a line makes an angle 45 degrees with x axis, then its slope is 1. And if a line makes an angle 135 degrees with x axis, then its slope is minus 1. And the second point is, if a line intersect y axis above origin, then its y axis intercept is positive. And if a line intersects y axis below origin, then its y axis intercept will be negative. Now, say for example, suppose I have to write the definition of this part. Since angle is 45 degrees, slope is 1, so I'll simply write x and then now it will intersect y axis above origin. So that means its y-axis intercept will be plus pi. So its definition will be x plus pi. So now we can start drawing our graphs. So suppose I have to draw the graph of y equals sine inverse of sine x. Now before I can draw this graph, I must know the principal value range of sine inverse function. So the principal value range of sine inverse function is from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. So what I'll do is, I'll draw the axis. So I'll mark these points both on x-axis and then on y-axis. Now what we know is, when x lies in the principal value range, then the value of sine inverse of sine x will be simply x. So what I'll do is, in this interval, I'll draw this y is equal to x line. Then I'll draw these zigzag structures. So now it'll be pi, it will be 3 pi by 2, 2 pi, minus pi, and then minus 3 pi by 2. Now I'll start writing the definitions. Now for this part, it makes an angle 135 degrees, so therefore it'll be minus x, and now it will intersect y-axis above origin, so it'll be minus x plus pi. Now for 3 pi by 2 to 5 pi by 2, now this is plus x and it will intersect y axis below origin. So it will be x minus 2 pi. Now again for this minus 3 pi by 2 and minus pi by 2. So here again will be minus x and then because it will intersect below origin, so it will be minus x minus pi. So I can write sine inverse of sine x as x when x lies between minus pi by 2 and plus pi by 2. Between pi by 2 and 3 pi by 2, I can write it as minus x plus pi. Between 3 pi by 2 and 5 pi by 2, it will be x minus 2 pi. And between minus 3 pi by 2 and minus pi by 2, it will be minus x minus pi. All I need to do is, I need to know its principal value range. And in that range, I need to draw the graph of y to x line and then I need to create those zigzag structures. Now in the same way, I can draw the graph of cos inverse of cos x. Now for cos inverse, principal value range is from 0 to pi. So I'll mark this interval. In the principal value range, it will be x. So I'll draw y squared x line. Now again, I'll draw these zigzag lines and then I'll mark the point. So this is pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, minus pi and minus 2 pi. Now between minus 2 pi and minus pi, it will be plus x and then plus 2 pi. Between minus pi and 0, it will be minus x plus 0. Between pi and 2 pi, it will be minus x plus 2 pi. And then between 2 pi and 3 pi, it will be x minus 2 pi. So that is the graph of cos inverse of cos x. Now we will move on to 10 inverse of 10x. Now for 10 inverse x, the principal value ranges from minus pi by 2 to plus pi by 2. So I'll mark this interval on x-axis and y-axis. Now in this given interval, 10 inverse of 10x will simply be x. So I'll draw y is equal to x line. 
and because minus pi by 2 and plus pi by 2 they are not included so i'll draw open circle there now in the case of tan inverse and cot inverse there is a small difference vis-a-vis -vis sin inverse and cos inverse in the case of sin and cos inverse we used to draw zigzag lines now in the case of tan inverse and cot inverse we will simply draw parallel lines so that is the graph of tan inverse of 10x i can write the definitions also so in the same way i can draw the graph of cot inverse of cot x now for cot inverse x principal value ranges from 0 to pi so i'll mark this interval on x axis and y axis and then it will be y squared x line and then again i'll draw parallel lines and i can write definitions also so that is the graph of cot inverse of cot x so for cosec inverse of cosec x and secant inverse of secant x i'll use the graph of sin inverse of sin x and cos inverse of cos x respectively and there is a small difference in the principal range of sin inverse and cosec inverse in the same way there is a small difference in the range of cos inverse and secant inverse of x so i'll just need to keep that difference in mind otherwise i can use the same graph so i'll take up an example say for example suppose i have to find number of solution of the equation cos inverse of cos x equals 10 minus x upon 10 when x belongs to 0 to 10. So what I'll do is I'll draw the graph of cos inverse of cos x. So principally range of cos x is 0 to pi. So I'll draw this line y is equal to x line and then 2 pi 3 pi and then 4 pi. So this is pi 2 pi 3 pi and just after 3 pi will be 10. Now I'll also draw this straight line which is y equals 10 minus x upon 10. So when x is 0, y is 1 and when x is 10, y is 0. So I'll draw this line. In the given interval, when x belongs to 0 to 10, these two graphs, they intersect at three distinct points. So therefore, the number of solution of this equation is 3. Thank you.